Howdy, Fly Tire friends. Thanks for tuning in today to another Avid Max Fly Tying Tuesday. Brady here with you, of course, gonna tie up a buckskin. This is a little bit of a different buckskin than you may have seen in the past. I'm calling this the buttery buckskin. Uh, it utilizes some hairline tubing and then a little bit of tinsel. So typically you'll see chamois cloth as the primary material for your buckskins, which is a great material. You can check out some of those other videos that we have on the channel. Uh, there's a jig style and then Bever's Better Buckskin. Those are really great patterns, uh, but this is a good one to have as well. Sort of simplifies it overall and makes for a killer fly that'll catch a lot of fish for you out there. So we'll go ahead and get one going. All right, so we got our finished fly in the vise there. Get another one ready to go here. Starting out with the hook that we're using. This is the 1160 from Daiichi. It is marketed as a clink hammer hook. You can see it's got that flat top spot up there that would be great for your clink hammers. That spot here. Uh, but it's got that nice long bend to it with a straight eye. I just really like this profile for caddis flies. And it is a slightly heavy wire. It's still a pretty light gauge overall, um, but isn't your typical light wire dry fly hook. And so for that reason, I'll be willing to use it on our caddis here. Starting out, we got our thread on there. That's some Beavis Tenot in black. And then we're gonna go right into the first material we're using, which is some Semperfly Paradigon body. And this is a great material from Semperfly for a lot of different applications. Really goes nicely with this buckskin. I'm just gonna pull some off of the spool here and tie it in right on the side. And I'm just securing it to the shank right now. I'm not gonna go any further than that with it until I tie in my next material. And that's the midge tubing, size midge, the round tubing from Hairline here and the buckskin color. It's a great little material to cater to this fly as well. And I'm gonna capture the tip of it there and tie it backward all the way down this shank. And so I do, like I said, I position this in the vise sort of uniquely because the goal is to keep that eye nice and level for when I'm finishing the fly. You could always tie this bug with it positioned in the vise more traditionally, more, more level or flat, and then rearrange it when you go to finish. Just for me, this tying process seems to work really well and is nice and quick for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and dress the shank and I walked those materials well back down that shank there. And then I can half hitch about a hook guy's back and start bringing some of those materials forward. Starting with the buckskin tubing. Get our thread out of the way. So I'm gonna stretch this pretty good as I go. I want it to flatten out on the shank as I go around. Just like so, and we're gonna do our best to keep nice touching wraps. That first one's a little funny. And then as you get going, it gets a little bit easier. As you're doing this, you'll notice it's hard to keep the tubing touching on the top of the shank, just because of the bend in the hook. And that's okay, that's really the reason I um, decided to add the flash, was so that I didn't have to worry about that as much and I could come through and sort of fill it in with that material. So we'll finish getting our buckskin covering the shank here, and then I'll show you what I mean with that flash. So some securing wraps, and then I'm gonna pull this Todd. I'm not gonna pull it too hard. I don't want it to slip back up and out of there, but I do wanna clip it as tight as I can get it so that I don't have too much of a bump to work with as I'm finishing off this fly. So sort of graduate that transition a little bit. And nice taut wraps down on top of that tubing, making sure it's not gonna come loose on us. 
And then we can bring that flash forward. So another half hitch. And then the Paragon flash. So typically when I do a ribbing material, whether it be wire or flash, I'm gonna counter wrap, but in this situation, I'm actually gonna wrap the same direction I did the buckskin so that I can match up that segmentation as I go. So I'm gonna do my best to split that segmentation with this flash. It adds a bit of character to the fly. I think it adds a little bit of depth to it. And then obviously adds a little bit of pop so it can be a, a sort of a trigger having some flash on this fly. The Semperfly material is the iridescent, let's see, what is this? Iridescent blue pearl. And uh, I don't see much blue in there. It really comes out kind of a nice gold color, which I really like in contrast to that skin tone, buckskin color. Now we'll take our thread, capture that, lock her down. And clip her out. And on to the final material, our good old peacock. And when you're using peacock, I recommend being picky with it because you can get a much nicer looking fly out of it. You can see there's a stark difference between this feather and those nice shimmery barbels. They're all pretty long and uniform versus one like this. That's a little bit more dull. It's kind of smashed down. It's just not gonna flare out as nicely as, as that first one will. So I'm gonna try and find two of those out of my he peacock pack here. And then I'm gonna clip the tips, mostly just so that they're aligned, but also a lot of times those tips don't have the best portion of the material. And then we can tie that in right on the side here, walk it back just a couple wraps, and then take our thread forward, half hitch one more time, behind the eye, try to leave ourselves a little bit of room here too though so that we're not crowding at the end. And then we can wrap that peacock forward. And we'll get one wrap down, make sure that that peacock is staying together, our two strands are married nicely. And we'll give it three or four or so. I always like to sort of brush the peacock back as I go. And then we can come on in and capture that off. prepare to whip finish it. Couple wraps behind and in front, trim out our extra and then give it that whip finish. Yeah, fun little fly to fish. This is a size 16 today. It's probably the size that I fish most often can be really great in 18s, if you can get them down to 20s as well. It can be really effective as more of a midge imitation. Some waterways, you might even tie this bigger if you go up to a 14 to match the caddis that you got swimming around subsurface there in, in your rivers. So we'll go ahead and reposition that, more true to the profile of the bug overall. And that's our buttery Buckskin. It's really an awesome fly for me, a top producer for me in my box. Definitely one I recommend to anybody fishing tailwaters and really any freestone or, or caddis populated waterways. This can be a great subsurface caddis option for your box. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. We appreciate you tuning in for today's tying video. If you got any suggestions on what you want to see in the future, drop us a comment in the comment boxes down there. You know, make sure to throw us a thumbs up, keep us making videos like this for you. Um, and share it with your friends. If you got a fly tire out there that's learning how to tie, this could be a good one for them to learn. So it might be a good one to recommend. Appreciate you. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Have fun tying.